about ecological sustainability. It's also about economic and social sustainability. So it's not just about putting wind turbines and solar panels on the roof of your office building. It's also about looking at the social dynamics and the age balance of your organisation and making sure that, that um, the work community is a social community that works. And also looking at the economics uh, of office design. In many ways, the most ecologically uh, sustainable building is the building that's economically sustainable in that we're using space very efficiently and we're maximizing the resources and the energy that we're expending. The most sustainable building is one you don't build. If you think about many of the corporations, the major impact they make on the environment is through their buildings. Most of them uh, have most of their energy use and environmental emissions associated directly and indirectly with buildings. So corporate real estate is an area where many corporations are looking to and say, how can we better be better corporate citizens? And it's largely through better management and more uh, green management of corporate real estate. We have been so surprised about how easy it was to save energy in buildings. And I'm not saying 100% savings, but savings by 50 to 70% of a traditional building. Um, just by making uh, smarter windows, just by making using more light in buildings, so you can you can uh, lower the amount of, of light uh, coming from uh, uh, light systems, and and there's a whole package of, of innovation ready for people to use that are saving money and are saving energy and are not not difficult to use. That's proven technology. Uh, you just have to go out there and and be and be positive about it and try to to change some things in the workplace. It's easy. We're very proud of our approach to the whole sustainability agenda. This building, which was completed about four years ago, has a full range of environmental um, specifications and characteristics like grey water, um, like it's got a, a bream excellent rating. But also, uh, we started on a journey of providing polystyrene cups at all our um, tea and coffee points, uh, and we've now got rid of all of that. We now have recycling as a matter of course. And we're also very fortunate to have colleagues across the group who are very, very interested in green buildings. So we've engaged in a raft of uh, initiatives such as Switch It Off. And uh, all of the computers here are on um, automatic switch off after 30 minutes. In my research, sustainability is about behavior. And, and I'm architect on a background, so I understand the issues about construction. And, but most of the concerns and most of the research has now being put into construction. Try to think the building automatization or construction methods to be more sustainable. And very little research is put how to, to enable people to behavior, behave in a way that they re reduce energy. Is global warming going to impact the workplace? Um, I'm, I'm one of those classic doubters about the man-made impact of, of global warm, uh, warming. But what I see, and that is very important, I actually see people starting to behave individually to prevent their contribu contribution in a negative way to global warming. So people on the scale of individuals are being much more cautious, are being much more careful, and people are demanding different ways of organizing, different ways of structuring the workplace to prevent global warming uh, to develop e even further than it currently is developing. Um, so it's people, we institutionally and politically we're still debating very much, but it's people that are saying, look, we don't know whether it's man-made, we don't know whether uh, we have an impact on it, but let's be sure, let's, do, let's prevent us from doing anything to negatively impact uh, on, on global warming. I think with sustainability it's about our own accountability and responsibility to global climate change and issues that we're well aware of. To my mind, we have to now challenge why we move 10 million people, for example, in the UK into offices every morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, there's no real need for the commuting patterns of the past to carry on as we head to a digital future. Ten years ago, we had to commute into a container for work, and inside that container were all the technologies for connecting and access to knowledge. Today, those have all been removed from that building. So we commute into a building which no longer contains most of the technology needed for work and therefore that has to be challenged for the future. Most of the evidence we see is that the real ways to do it is about how you operate the buildings you've got because that's what is mostly around us and it's the day-by-day -day activities of people, um, the knowledge of the technical guys who run buildings and the knowledge of users that's actually where 
the real challenge is. And that ends up boiling down to the same lessons that come out of any workplace design issue, which is deal with people. Well, we have had an opportunity to make a green building ourselves. Uh, we, uh, we had an old real estate here and we put a, a, a penthouse office on top of it. Um, a building that was opened by Bill Clinton and is an example for sustainability uh, in the Netherlands. You can make uh, an office that is nice to work in with a lot of glass, a lot of light, um, but with low energy systems so that uh, you don't pay as much money for, uh, for energy and people like to work in it. We have a serious program called Planet Me. And in PNP we have programs for reducing energy on our nearly 50 airplanes, on the 40,000 vehicles we have, and on the 3 million square meters of buildings. We have all kinds of programs to reduce energy on all those three main items. In PNP we have uh, three levels. First is the count carbon level. All that you do on carbon we count and we report on that. And we are very proud that we became this year again the best in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index worldwide. Second is that we have a, a program called um, Code Orange. That means how do we behave as a company in the company with all kinds of energy savings or energy use. The third is Choose Orange. That means how do we help all our families of our 160,000 people working in TNT to reduce energy? So we have worldwide programs for families, worldwide programs on cars, airplanes and buildings. And we count every CO2 we put into the air. If you give your people the freedom to choose when they work and if they are at work or not, they can prevent themselves from running into traffic jams. Uh, so the mobility perspective is very important uh, and they are able to manage their CO2 uh, footprint much better uh, as an individual uh, uh, than in the previous situation we had. Um, that said, of course, there are also many things we could further develop from a sustainability uh, perspective. Uh, I believe that has a lot to do with, um, with the attitude of people, how they behave, and how they further adopt sustainability in how they work and how they do their things going forward. And that's the next development of the journey we're on.